If we look down from space, we can see that the African map is changing. Satellites are spotting pictures of green grass growing randomly in the Sahara Desert. NASA has released satellite images. They capture the desert's green shift with plant life popping up everywhere. In fact, some ancient dry lakes are filling up with water again. The desert is about six times wetter than it should be. Meanwhile, at the edge of the Sahara Desert, there is a massive wall of trees being built by humans to stop the desert from spreading. Unlike the Great Wall of China, made of ancient stone, or the US-Mexico border wall, made of lifeless steel, this great green wall in Africa is built out of life. Stretching an estimated 7,800 kilometers, the Great Green Wall could become the longest living structure. These two major events happening in the Sahara could potentially change the African landscape from this to this. In this video, I have two goals. First is to show you why the Great Green Wall is the most important project right now. And second is to explain why these satellite images could result in the rise of the poorest region in the world and potentially lead to the fall of Africa's largest economy. Nigeria has already been affected. One of the driest regions on Earth, but maybe not so much anymore. The Sahara is blooming with life. Within a matter of days, North Africa received a year's worth of rain. Say this is only the beginning. Meanwhile, because the storms have shifted, some countries that should be getting more rainfall, like Nigeria and Cameroon, are getting fewer rains. Why is this happening? Is it a cause for celebration or a sign of devastation? So first, to understand how impossible it is to turn the Sahara green, you have to see this. Researchers say that for about every 21,000 years, the Sahara Desert naturally transforms from a dry, hot desert into a lush rainforest. This happens because of the changes in the tilt and rotation of the Earth, which affects the planet's climate. This cycle of changes have happened 230 times over the past 8 million years. But the difference today is that humans are stepping in. Instead of letting nature decide when the Sahara will turn green, we are taking charge and it's starting to work. Before, there was widespread drought and hunger here. Then the tree planting took place and then a garden for the women to grow crops. But wait, before I delve into the Great Green Wall and what is happening in the Sahara today, I need to show you something else. Think of this as proof that the Sahara wasn't always a desert. All across the Sahara, they are ancient cave drawings, incredible artwork left by our ancestors. These drawings are not only beautiful, but also astonishingly detailed. What's interesting is that these drawings show animals like hippos, giraffes, cattle. All these animals need a lot of water to survive. Today, you would expect to find them in Central and Southern Africa's savannas, not in the middle of the desert. These drawings are telling us that around 9,000 years ago, ancient civilization in the Sahara lived alongside these animals near rivers and lakes. This means the Sahara Desert we see today likely looked like this back then. So we know it's possible, the Sahara can turn green. At least, that was the idea when in 2007, the African Union committed to building the Great Green Wall, stretching all the way from Senegal, past nine other sovereign countries, and ending in Djibouti. As I see it, there are three main stages to building this wall. 
Stage 1, the project began with creating a barrier of trees across the Sahel region to stop the Sahara from expanding southward. Since the 1900s, the desert has been expanding by about 10%. The second stage, the focus here is on using techniques to keep water and soil healthy for these trees, ensuring they can sustain themselves without constant human involvement. The good news is we have developed methods to grow trees in deserts and they do work. In the Sahel, we find an age-old water harvesting structure called the half moon. This simple structure has all of this capacity to store this water and hold this water until the Stage water three is to scale up these efforts, reclaiming one million square kilometers of desert land. In theory, this could change the region's climate and water levels, eventually allowing life to spread naturally across the desert. As of 2024, only 25% of the wall has been completed. The project has stopped in countries like Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger, Chad, Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Eritrea because of ongoing conflicts. Meanwhile, Senegal has made the most progress and is considered the most successful country in building the Great Green Wall. The truth of the matter is that the original idea of building a continuous wall across 11 Sahel countries to stop the desert is failing. The project is estimated to cost between 33 to 50 billion dollars. In 2021, France and other global leaders pledged 14 billion, but only 2.5 billion of that has been delivered. In total, 27 billion has been pledged, but most of the money hasn't shown up. These setbacks has led some experts to say that the idea of an expanding desert is outdated. In simple terms, the world doesn't seem interested in stopping the Sahara Desert from growing. Because of these challenges, the African Union strategy has shifted. Instead of solely focusing on stopping the desert, the Great Green Wall is now being built to support local communities with food and water resources. The UN and agricultural organizations has teamed up with about 120 local villages to identify native species for the project. So far, this partnership has identified about 55 indigenous plants being used in the wall. These plants are being used to create food and income for about 33,000 people in the region. But there is one major problem here. The Great Green Wall project has been underway for over 17 years and it was supposed to be completed by 2030. Yet only 25% of the wall has been completed. Let's be realistic. At the current pace, the wall will not be completed by 2030. The 1 million square kilometers of land that the African Union aimed to restore is still just a dream. But what if I told you the Sahara Desert might turn green by itself? Remember the NASA pictures we saw earlier? They were taken in September 2024. An unusual weather event called an extra tropical cyclone brought heavy rain to parts of the Sahara Desert, especially in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, and Libya. Normally, the Sahara Desert is one of the driest places in the world, receiving very little rain. That was until this extra tropical cyclone happened. Imagine the cyclone as warm air from the south meeting cold air from the north. When they mix, the air begins spinning in a circular pattern, creating a storm. This cyclone typically happens in cooler regions outside the tropics like Europe or North America. Now why did the storm shift into the Sahara Desert? 
Scientists think it's connected to global warming and changing weather patterns. Warmer oceans and air are affecting the way winds move around the planet. These changes in wind can push storms where they are not supposed to go, like the Sahara Desert. So this cyclone ended up dropping huge amounts of rain in one of the driest places on Earth, causing areas of the desert to briefly turn green. A study published in Nature suggests that this shift in rainfall could happen more frequently in the coming decades. Other experts believe that the shift in the rain is influenced by record high ocean temperatures. As ocean temperatures balance out globally, the rain is expected to shift back south. But after researching this topic, I realized something I was getting wrong and others might be confused about. Here's what I discovered. The Sahara getting more rain and Western Africa receiving less are not directly connected. The rain isn't simply moving from, from the southern region to the Sahara. While climate change does play a role in both events, there are other major factors at work. Let me clarify my words. It is entirely possible for both regions to receive rain and thrive. One area does not need to die for the other to flourish. So earlier, when I said the African map is changing, I didn't mean that new countries are being formed or that borders drawn during the colonial era are being redrawn. What I meant is that if the Great Green Wall is ever fully completed, it won't just change the African map, it will change the terrain, it will alter the climate, and most importantly, improve the lives of the people in and around the in poorest the region in the world. Before the world's widespread drought and hunger here, then the tree planting took place and then the garden for the women. In other the words, cross. it's not just the map, that's changing is the entire African landscape. Thanks for watching.